This is Leet Code question one, the two sum problem. Now this is a classic problem and there's a reason why this is the first uh, in the Leet Code list. And that's because we can solve this intuitively firstly, um, but then we'll come across a cool approach um, which might not be obvious at first. So given an array of integers, nums, and an integer target, return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to target. So you may assume that each input would have exactly one solution, and you may not use the same element twice. Uh, you can return the answer in any order. So let's have a look at an example here. Example one. We want the target of nine. So we look at the elements in nums and we can see, well, the zeroth element two and the first element seven, if you sum those together, you get nine as the answer. So we can return the index of those numbers. So the array uh, zero one, if we look at example two, we can see that we want the target of six. So three won't add anything, but two and four can add together. And then the first and second element can thus be returned. And it's good to note that there's exactly one solution. So as soon as we find that, uh, we can return that. Another thing is only one valid answer exists. And is this really good follow-up question? Um, can you come up with an algorithm that is less than all n squared time complexity? So we'll see that in the second part of this video. But firstly, let's solve this the intuitive way. So the intuitive approach is to create a for loop. And we want to loop through each number in the array starting from the start. So we'll let i equals 0. Um, and while i is less than the length of the array, um, we can increment i. And then what we want to do is for that particular number we're on, we want to loop through the remaining numbers or the other numbers. So what we can do is we can have this nested for loop and then we'll just rewrite the variable i as j to represent it being a different number and since we've got this double for loop we know this is going to be o of n squared um, there's only really one thing we need to do in the for loop so there's no o of n things in the nested for loop so basically we want to ignore the case that um, you don't want to repeat the same element. And since you may not use the same element twice, we need to check if our number that our outer iteration is on is equal to the index of the inner number. So we're comparing the indexes of the outer to the inner loop. If they're the same, well, you could just continue. Um, but if we find that the first number plus the second number, so the outer number, the number from the outer loop plus the number from the particular inner loop that we're on in this inner iteration, if, that, if those two numbers together add up to the target value, then that means we've got the result so we can just go ahead and return the indexes of that because that's what the question wants so we can just return i and j and we're guaranteed a solution um, but for typescript uh, we want to return just a empty array so it matches the return type because it doesn't necessarily know so let's run this Okay, so it's accepted the solution. And if we look at the space complexity, it's O of 1. The reason it's O of 1 is because we're not needing to... Um, 
all we're doing is an addition there. Um, there's no, we're not assigning values for every iteration or anything like that. We're just looking through the numbers. Um, so the time complexity is n squared because um, the memory lookup is a nested um, for loop. Um, but the O of 1 space complexity is okay, but we can do better as the follow-up question suggests. How can we do better? So let's consider the fact that we don't want to have two for loops. We will need to have at least one for loop because we need to loop through the numbers to be able to determine what they are. And, you know, that's obvious because we need to go through the numbers to find the sum of them if they equal the target. How can we be doing better than O of n squared? Well, we better than O of n squared is basically, well, for this case, we should be aiming for O of n. And the reason we know we're aiming for O of n is because there's the follow-up question, can you do better than O of n squared, which we can. Um, but we need to loop through everything. Um, so it only makes sense that things are going to be O of n. So... And it doesn't need to be O n log of n, so we'll discuss the logs in another video, but, um, you know, we're not doing any sorting here. Um, so let's just copy this out of for loop here so we can loop through our numbers. And the trick to this question is rather than having two for loops that are nested, and we do that because we needed one element in the numbers array added to another element in the numbers array, but we weren't sure which one it was, and add those two numbers to equal the target, the trick is to think of it as, well, to find the other number, you can take the target number and you can subtract the particular number you're on, and that will find you the complement. So let's create this variable here. Uh, we'll call it complement. And Essentially, that's just going to equal the target minus the particular number that you're on. And the reason we do that is so we don't have to... If we keep track of all of these complements um, in a, like a object or a map, they will have O of 1 lookup. So we can just quickly look that up by number. And if it exists, then we can say, well you know, that complement plus the number we're on, that's going to equal our target. So let's just add uh, the number we're on, the index, i. <clears throat> so let's create a variable to keep track of all of our complements. And let's just adjust some settings here, make it two spaces, uh, even though I'm sort of halfway through already. Um, so let's create our complements variable. And this is essentially going to be an um, object where the key is the particular number and then this value is the num, uh, the index of the number um, that are in the nums array. So we can have this map type. This is um, built into JavaScript. Uh, and then we can put in this generic type here where the keys number and the value is number. I'll just put this note here to say that the index is the number. So that means essentially what we can do is, well, we have the complement, so we can just go ahead and we can set the um, complement. Um, so on a map, we can use the set method and we can pass in the number, which is nums i, and then the index i. So every time we've looped through a number, um, we've added the complement of the number that we're looking for into the complements uh, map, which means that if we can find that, um, or if we do a lookup when we go to the next iteration and that number exists, well, that means those two numbers together will be the target. 
So that's why we keep track of the index because this question wants us to return the index. So all we have to do is just check for that. So we can have an if condition and basically if our complements, and since we're using a map, we need to use the has uh, method. So we pass in our complement. So the number uh, that we're looking for, and if that's in our list or our map, we can go ahead and we can return the uh, index. So to get the index of the complement, you can say complements.get. Uh, complement and I'll return the index uh, and then we also need the index of the value that we're on so we can pass that in as a second uh, element and then we can just go ahead and we can return that and if we're thinking about the space and time complexity uh, we've got this for loop so that's going to be O of N. And the space complexity, that's also going to be O of N because we need to loop through our numbers and then we need to assign a variable to each of the numbers. And it could be the case that we don't find the complement all the way to the end. So we need to consider the worst case scenario where the space is O of N and the time complexity is of n because we're doing a lookup for each element in the array. Um, when you get the element uh, from the map, that's the of one lookup, so you can get that almost instantaneously. Um, so the of n will be the dominant term. So let's go ahead and submit that. And we can see it beats 86%, which is pretty good. So this was a really really good um, algorithm to solve. It's, it shows you how you need to know some of these approaches because the, um, you know, the intuitive approach isn't always the best approach. And if you haven't studied this before, it's sort of, you know, unlikely that you'll stumble across these solutions. Um, the good news is that, you know, the topics I'm covering in this video will give you the fundamentals of all these sort of techniques. And in the next video, we're going to see the two sum part two.